thousand times I fail, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond. Amen. So when we meet in 
the church service or, or in the workplace or wherever in the house we always give thanks we always give praises to God and also we always praise to uh, the friends around us he, uh, Paul encouraged us to always uh, say something positive to our friends not to give um, negative comments or negative impression or look down to somebody but he encouraged the body of Christ to always give positive sentences to uh, one another all right so uh, how can we always be thankful in all circumstances that's why we need a proper perspective uh, of the circumstances either the circumstances of God or the circumstances to one another and only then we will be able to give thanks in all circumstances like uh, Paul said in these two verses and I believe uh, there are three wrong attitudes that could steal away the uh, positive uh, attitude of our life to give thanks. There are three uh, wrong attitudes. Uh, I noted here the number one, uh, the wrong attitude is our pride. Say together, our pride. Our pride. Or in other words, in uh, I might say selfishness. What kind of pride uh, that uh, mentioned here? This is about the attitude that says nobody ever gave me anything. I have everything I have right now is because I work hard in my past life. Or maybe for you students, I have studied hard all these years and now I graduated and I get a good job, I get a good salary and finally I get everything paid off. And this kind of attitude, if you have this kind of attitude or pride, we feel that we should not thank to anybody because all the hard work, all the success is because of me. It's only me. It's talk about me and myself. Or maybe uh, it's, it's similar to the selfishness. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving is not an example, it's a story actually. The day before Thanksgiving, uh, an old man in Phoenix called his son who lives in New York and then dad said to the son uh, my son uh, how are you oh fine dad uh, what's up uh, I hate to ruin your day but I'd like to break uh, some bad news to you you know that uh, you and uh, my uh, your mother and I already got married for 45 years but she and I are planning to get a divorce before Thanksgiving day so uh, because we are sick of each other 45 years of marriage is full of misery and we are enough, we are done. So please uh, tell your sister who lives in Chicago that you, uh, your mother and I are going to divorce. Okay, okay, and then uh, uh, dad hung up on the phone and then the boy frantic and then he called his sister who lives in Chicago. Hey listen, sis, you know that uh, dad and mom are going to divorce. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving, he just called me and then uh, sat and also surprised. Uh, the sister said to the brother, what the heck, they're, they're going to divorce. And then, okay, uh, I'll take care of this, uh, don't worry. And then uh, she hung up and then she called uh, her dad back. And then dad, what are you going to do? What's wrong with you? What, what kind of problem? We've never heard of any problem between you and mom. I thought you were always happy, like happy couple. And then, yeah, uh, I, I've, I've enough with your mom. Your mom is always cause misery and, and so on and so on. And then we plan to divorce before Thanksgiving. And then um, the, the daughter said, don't do anything. You listen, mom, dad, don't do anything. Just don't sign any paper yet until uh, I and my brother come to you. Uh, the next morning, we will catch uh, the earliest flight and then we'll come to your place. Just don't do anything. Okay, promise? Promise that? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We promise, we promise. We will wait until you come. Okay, and then dad hung up and then uh, dad turned to the wife and then, Okay, honey, let's bake our turkey. Let's put it in the oven. Thanksgiving is ready. Uh, our children will come and they will pay their own expenses. <laughs> they will fly. <laughs> they will pay their own flight and... Uh, we don't have to pay anything to invite our children to come to our Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> you see, this is only joke how people sometimes are selfish. <laughs> but I do hope that you do not treat your friends here selfish. Alright, amen? Yeah, okay, yeah. that's the first wrong attitude about our pride. And then the second wrong attitude that usually we have is a critical spirit or constant complaining. Sit together, critical spirit. Critical spirit. Or complaining spirit. Like actually, how many of you here never
never complain in your life. From your, the baby until you grow up now and until forever, you never complain about anything. Amen. Amen? <laughs> okay, I, I do hope so. All right. Uh, uh, this is, uh, what kind of attitude this is? Uh, this is about not being, uh, instead of being grateful, the person who has critical spirit or a constant complaint always finds something uh, something wrong in, in his life or in her life to be complained about. Let me tell you another story. Uh, one lady who have grown, uh, who has a potato farm. One day, uh, this time of the year, uh, his, uh, his field is really successful and then he has healthy potatoes and no one failed, no bugs, no whatever. And then at, at last, uh, the whole village heard that she might find something to be happy about because this lady is known as a grumbler, as a constant, constant grumbler. And then when everybody heard that uh, her potato field harvest uh, is successful, and then the preacher decided to visit her and to remind her to be thankful because of the harvest, the success harvest. And then the, the preacher arrived to her place and then uh, he said hi. Hi Mary. Uh, good news, right? I heard that your potato harvest is successful and uh, now you can find nothing to worry about, nothing to complain about this year. You can say thanks to God and then you can also celebrate with us all in the village here. And then Mary said, yes, it's true, preacher, it's true, pastor, that I have a good uh, harvest of potatoes this year. But uh, I'm still not satisfied. Oh, what's wrong, Mary? The preacher uh, is surprised. What, what's wrong with, with the potato field? Uh, and then Mary said, yes, uh, the potato, potato uh, crops uh, is fine. But you know, my pigs are now hungry because I cannot find any bad potato to feed my pigs. <laughs> she always can find something wrong with, with everything that is good given by God. All right, so I think uh, the conclusion of the story, if Mary could not find baked potato to feed the pigs, it's better that, that uh, she let the pigs uh, starve, go hungry, and then kill it, and then fry it, and then make bacon, and then celebrate with the whole village. <laughs> and make the roast pig, right? <laughs> to celebrate the Thanksgiving. Okay, that's the wrong, second wrong attitude, that you slowly ruin the spirit of Thanksgiving. And then the third wrong attitude is callousness. Say together, callousness. Yes. Sometimes we are so careless in this life. Uh, it means that I don't care this is Christmas. I don't care this is Thanksgiving. I don't care because I never celebrated anything, any holiday in my life. I always work hard, work hard, work hard, and work hard. And someone said that uh, suppose a star only comes out uh, in the sky only once a year. What are you going to do if a star only comes out once a year? Maybe we do not want to spend on all night long sleeping, right? But we want to wait and gaze upon the sky, waiting for the star, that special star to come out, right? But because we have so many stars, millions and millions of stars that appears in the sky every day, every night, the whole year and forever, and we usually uh, look down and take less care and uh, we do not appreciate the star and we have grown accustomed. This is how maybe husband and wife because we uh, before you are incredible lover before you got married but then uh, when, when you live in separated house when you are boyfriend and girlfriend oh I miss her oh I miss him I want to meet her I want to meet him every day every hour right you cannot uh, separate separate it right but when you dang 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 live in the same house, eat together, sleep together for 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, and you have grown the custom. You look down to the spouse. You don't uh, have the spirit of thanks. Thank you, God, for the wonderful spouse. You you just don't admire your spouse anymore. You uh, tend to uh, like uh, find something wrong with the spouse. Oh, she is a messy lady. Oh, uh, he is a grumble. Grumbler. Uh, I don't I don't stand to live with him or with her anymore. Um, so I hope that we do not have these three wrong attitudes. Amen, everybody? Amen. For example, in the Bible, uh, the Israel, the Israel people, uh, when they were led by Moses in the desert for 40 years, uh, at the first time, I believe, 
uh, the Israel people brought some food uh, from Egypt, right? But when they were wandering around in the desert for 40 years, of course, the food they brought from Egypt has gone, right? Because there were like 4 million people of Israel at that time. And then when they grumbled because they had no food, they had no water and everything in the desert, so dry and arid, and then God answered their prayer, even though they grumbled, God sent the miraculous manna from heaven, right? The, the white powder, and then they gathered every morning, except in Sabbath there is no manna on the ground, and then they make it, uh, they, they, they bake it, and then they make it like a sweet, uh, sweet bread, something like that. But after they enjoyed the miracle from God, day after day, after day, after day, they eat manna Monday, they eat manna on Tuesday, they eat manna on Wednesday, they eat manna on Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then the next week, the following week, 50, 52 weeks in a year, times 40 years, and then they begin to fed up. Ah, oh, manna again, manna again. They never said thank you. They did not have thankful spirit. And they started to grumble again. Why? It's always manna. It's always manna. I cannot stand to see manna anymore. So you see, when uh, they did not have any food, they expect a miracle. God answered their prayer. They, uh, he sent uh, manna from heaven. Isn't that a miracle? Right? Because we never ate manna like that, right? We ate manna, but we bought from the shop next door. <laughs> not, 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 long, not from heaven. So Israel, instead of thankful, they started to grumble and feel not satisfied. Uh, and I noticed that the three wrong attitudes here, once again, the brightness, the callousness, the critical spirit, will prohibit us from uh, giving thanks to God in all circumstances. And I'm not stopped. Uh, at this point, this morning I'd like to share with you how about the three right attitudes in order to uh, celebrate and we have proper perspective on the Thanksgiving day like this. Number one, our Thanksgiving should be expressed. Say together, our Thanksgiving should be expressed. What does it mean? Uh, let's see here, I'll show you two verses. In Psalms chapter 100 verse 4, Psalms 100 Verse 4, 4 please. Enter these gates. 4. Okay, let's read it together with me. 1, 2, 3. Enter, Enter these gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And another verse is Psalms 107, verse 1. Psalms 107, verse 1. 107, verse 1, please. Okay, one, two, three, everybody. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. We see here that King of David, he trained himself to always give thanks and to always praise God for whatever circumstances he faced. You see that King David, uh, when you read the whole Bible, uh, does not have uh, a happy life. He had been pursued, he had been uh, wanted to be killed by his own uh, father-in-law, King Saul. But uh, David always uh, uh, determined in his heart that no matter what happened in my life, no matter uh, what other people treat me, but I want to enter God's, pray, uh, God's uh, entrance with uh, thanksgiving and with right attitude in my heart. And in another example, uh, maybe you still... Uh, Remember in Luke chapter uh, 17, we do not need to open that one, about the 10 men who had leprosy, right? And then they met with Jesus and everybody got healed. But only one man who got healed uh, come back uh, to Jesus uh, to say thank you, Jesus, right? And then what happened? The other nine uh, men still got healed, but only one man was made whole. Because you see that uh, Jesus, uh, after seeing him going back to Jesus and said, thank you. Jesus said that, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Isn't that a strange uh, sentence that Jesus said that uh, your faith has made you well? Because when, by the time Jesus said to that man, that man actually was healed from his leprosy, right? But Jesus, when Jesus said that has, your faith has made you well, uh, Jesus uh, tends to talk about not only physical healing, but the emotional healing. So that one man 
uh, came back to his village and he became not only a healed man but also a spiritual and mental whole man. We too are made whole by our thanksgiving because a psychologist today said that sincere uh, gratitude like thanksgiving, always praise, always say something positive to God and to each other is the healthiest of all human emotion. And also, uh, Hans Sely, the father of stress study, he said that uh, the gratitude, uh, the way, the attitude that we always give thanks, praise to each other and to God always produce more positive emotional energy than any other attitude in our lives. So a thankful, having a thankful heart will draw us closer not only to God but also to each other. Alright, so let's practice today. Can you practice, uh, say something positive to your neighbor? Please like, thank you for being my wonderful sister in Christ. Thank you for being my wonderful brother in Christ. Say something positive, right? Thank you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for supporting me. See? When you say thank you, when you say thank you, I see here that everybody smiles, right? I see that beaming smiles um, all, all, all over the room, right? You cannot say thank you. Thank you. We we like grumble face, right? When we say thank you, it can cheer up my heart. It can cheer up your heart, right? And it also can draw us closer to each other and also to God. Amen. 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 And what about if we never have uh, the thankful spirit or we never say thank you to anybody? See here in Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Please, this one open up because this is an important uh, verse. I want you to realize what happens if we never say thank you to God and to other people. Alright, let's read it together. One, two, three. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Underline their foolish hearts were darkened. Here, if uh, you see here that if we never say thank you to God and to uh, each other, that uh, finally the devil will make our hearts darken, and also will be hard. Uh, in other words our hearts will become hardened. We see that pride keeping people from worshiping God and being thankful. That's why uh, we need to always practice, to always train ourselves to be thankful to God every day, to be thankful to uh, everybody around you. So we will begin and start our day with joy and then we, it, will, it will give something positive. I believe it, it will bless your day back. All right. Amen. We can say thank you to God when we maybe you woke up healthy. You woke up. Uh, oh, I can breathe freely. I can wave my arm. I can lift up my arm. I can walk. Right. You can say thank you to God when you are able to go to church freely. Right. You can serve uh, God in the church. Uh, for example, also you can say thank you to God because you have wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ that can support you. Yes, that can right. encourage you, Amen. right? You can find something to be thankful in anything, in any way, right? Amen. And that's the first point. Our thanksgiving should be expressed, not only kept in the heart, but it should be expressed in words, in the attitudes, all right? And then the second point, our thanksgiving should be expensive. Not expensive, but expensive. You should be expand. Uh, say together, our thanksgiving should be expensive. Should be expensive. It means that uh, the thanksgiving, uh, the attitudes of thanksgiving should expand to cover both two areas in this life. What are areas? The first areas I noted here, the blessing of life. Say together, blessing of life. We should thanks uh, about the blessing of life. Of course, right? Who never say thanks to God about the blessing in your life? Of course, everybody, right? But usually, when we say thank you to God uh, he, uh, for the blessing in our life, we usually say in general, like, uh, thank you God for all the blessing. What kind of blessing that we should be thankful to God, right? So if you pray and you say thank you for the blessing in your life, please be specific. What kind of blessing that you already experienced from God? Mention it one by one. For example, if we have right now, we can buy one Bible, right? We can own a Bible, we can read it for free. You should be thankful to God. You should be 
uh, feel abundantly blessed because a one third of the people in the world they do not have have access um, to a Bible. Like uh, for example, people who live in the communist commun uh, communist uh, government government will burn will uh, will throw away all the Bible and they have to memorize the verses and then they will. Uh, encourage each other, the body of Christ, using only the memory. They cannot, when they preach, they cannot have the Bible freely like this. Even when they gather and have a service, they have to do it in secretly. Whenever everybody is sleeping, then they can start the, the service in underground in China, in, in the basement, when, when I say underground, or in a secret place. And when they sing, they cannot uh, use the music like this. With, with the drum, with the whatever the sound, with the noise, it will wake up the neighbor and then the neighbor will report to the police and the police will catch and send all everybody to jail for like 10 years, 15 years or whatever and then they will beat up, they will torture the people who found a uh, worshipping God so we have to feel uh, blessed that we can um, buy the Bible, all the Bible freely in this country. Amen, everybody? Amen. And also, like I mentioned, if we wake up this morning healthy, no illness, we can move, no no pain in our body, we should uh, feel more blessed because I know this year that one million people in this world are treated in the hospital. More or less one million people every day go to the hospital. So if we wake up healthy, if we wake up, we can hug our spouse, we can um, speak, we can hear, we can see, we should be feel blessed and say thank you to God, right? And also if we never experience the danger of the war, if we never experience the loneliness in the prison, if we never experience torture or starvation, we should feel more blessed and fortunate because uh, the studies say that 500 million people in the earth um, they experience all kind of those things war, prison, uh, torture and then starvation 500 million so if you wake up you have money in your pocket you have clothes you have some food in your refrigerator you have a place to sleep you must be thankful to God because we are richer than 75% of the people in the world who never have a roof over the top of the head, who have no food, they have to find, they have to uh, dig uh, something in the in the trash can, like that. Uh, besides, we have to thankful for the blessing of life, not only for the blessing, but we always thankful to God for the burdens of life. We, the burdens of life. Say together, we have to be thankful for the burdens of life. We have to be Thessalonians 5 said, uh, Paul said that we must give thanks to all circumstances. When he said all circumstances, it means both uh, good and bad, right? And also in Ephesians 5:20, he said that we uh, always we must always give thanks to God. Maybe you think that oh maybe uh, Paul's life is a happy life. He has a happy life. He never experienced any problem. You are, you are wrong because when Paul wrote these two books of uh, epistolic, uh, he is in the jail. He was beaten up because of uh, the good news that he preached to all the people. And Paul also experienced a shipwreck. He was beaten by a snake. He was stoned. He was naked, cold, and hungry. But you see here in these two verses, Paul never stopped giving thanks in all circumstances in for the blessing of life, for the burdens of life. He never, never giving, uh, stopped giving thanks. Why? Because Paul has a proper perspective on the thanksgiving, like the title of my sermon. Let's uh, read one of the quotations Paul said in Rome chapter 8, verse 18. Why he can give thanks in all the burden of his life. Rome 8, verse 18. All right, one, two, three. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. And then the second verse, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, please. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. All right, one, two, three. That, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. 
single things. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And everybody say Amen. You see here that Paul has a real proper perspective uh, to give thanks to God in the burdens of life especially. Why? Because he not only uh, see and observe all the struggle and the problems that he has here on earth, but his eyes always gaze upon the price, eternal life, the glorious heaven that will, will wait for him when he will be with God forever. Amen? So Amen. whatever problem that you have right now, whatever struggle that you have, whatever pain, whatever suffering, just don't hinder you from giving thanks to God. Amen, everybody? Amen. You must face upon the Lord. You must gaze upon the price, the eternal price in heaven that will wait for all of us here. Amen? Amen. That will encourage, that will make us more stronger. And also, Paul said that um, in the problem, he will he will be stronger, not weaker in the problem. Uh, underline this, uh, not for the problem, but in the problem. Because he understand pretty well that the problem will be used by God to be changed for the glory of God, right? Maybe when you face the problem, you just don't understand what is God's purpose in your life. You don't understand why is this all happening, but stop grumbling, just stop uh, being uh, or, or, have, or being having a judgment spirit or critical spirit. Why God? Why God? Stop saying why. Just be agreed for whatever God is, do is doing in your life, right? Amen. Just agree. Just agree with God. Because uh, at the end of the road, you will understand why that, uh, that thing happened in your life. Uh, I'll give you a reality here, a reality check. Uh, uh, for all of you who has been a member, a long member of this church. Uh, we, we started in 2002, right? We rented a, a building, a hotel, we moved from place to place. But uh, we always uh, try to save some money from the donation uh, because we have a dream. Someday we might have uh, our own building. Because you see, when, when we rent a place, uh, they are nice at the beginning. But when the, the, the rental uh, is continuing, they kind of like not happy, right? Uh, they might find something not happy with us. So we, we try to be patient. We start to uh, uh, save some savings from the donation for our dream. But then uh, a sudden thing happened at the end of the uh, 2006 uh, near the Christmas uh, party uh, when uh, some of the women decorated the, the Christmas trees. Suddenly, uh, in the kitchen, far away from the Christmas tree, the kitchen, the, the fire spark, and then there is uh, there is like a, sh a short circuit. Sh short circuit happened in the electricity because it's an old building. And then, the, uh, in short story, uh, the the whole building that we rented, the whole was burned down. Every everything was gone. The, the, we just replaced uh, the music equipment with the new ones. Everything just gone like uh, the, the, the burning offering to God, right? <laughs> and then when we face like that, especially me and my husband, uh, of course we cry, we cry. But we never said, why God, why God? I never said that. Instead, I encouraged myself and my husband. I said, okay, uh, you believe that everything belongs to God, right? God can bless us with a lot of money. We, uh, God can bless us with a lot of souls. But he has the right to do anything with the blessing, right? He can take anything that he want from our life. Every, I'm sorry, every time I remember that, uh, I always like tear up. Uh, <laughs> because it's uh, the saddest thing in, in my life. And then uh, I encouraged myself and I encouraged him and I said, uh, he can take everything that he wanted uh, because maybe he tested us. Maybe uh, we love more love to the blessing rather than to him personally. But we, we want to choose today that we love the source of the blessing more than anything of the blessing that he had given us. Okay, uh, and I said to him, he can, uh, God can take everything in our lives. But one thing we ask that he never take away his presence in our life. I said like that. And then we pray and pray. And then, you see, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the problem, we, we did not understand what's God's plan, what's God's plan. But then it will, I, I realized uh, finally that uh, the fire uh, uh, finally make all the uh, members and all the uh, full-timer and part-timer become stronger, become bonded. They, are, they, they feel like we are one big family, we have to support one another. 
and and I see the love of uh, of all the the members in the church uh, at that time to support us to support all the church uh, that that all the the things that we need and we finally recover very very uh, faster and then you see that uh, at the end of the journey at the end of the problem you see that God magnify His glory and then we can. Uh, this is not because of our strength and our might, right? Uh, and then finally God gave us the big building like this, a beautiful building. building. Amen. 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 All right. That's why uh, the second point, our thanksgiving, should be expand to cover not only the blessing of life, but also to cover also the burdens of life. Whenever you have a problem, you must always give thanks, no matter what. All right, and then you finally will understand what's God's plan in your life. And then the third point, our thanksgiving is expected. Say together, our thanksgiving is expected. Our what does it mean? Our thanksgiving is expected as a sign of two things. Like Paul said, give thanks in all circumstances because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Of course, uh, as a Christian, we must give thanks because it is expected by a lot of people. As two signs, what kind of sign? I noted here the first sign is as a growing Christian. Say together, growing Christian. Growing Christian. When you first uh, fall in love with Jesus, you accepted Him in your life as Savior and God. You are like a spiritual baby, right? But God did not want you to stay in a, a baby level for like 20 years later time of 50 years but he want all of us here to grow up as a christian as a mature bride amen, amen. amen. for example i have a baby 13 months old almost 14 months uh sometimes he seems nice but sometimes you cannot expect a baby to be calm to be peaceful and joyful 24 hours seven days a week amen. right you cannot expect like that sometimes uh out of the blue she cried she cried I asked, what happened baby of course she cannot say anything oh i have a stomach ache mom no i'm hungry mom i'm wet my diapers wet no she cannot she cannot say uh, thanks of those things you see uh, the, the the only way of communication she cried 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 no matter what out of the blue we just we just uh, laugh we just uh, tickle each other and then uh, she cried and then i do not know what happened i take the diaper i try to give milk and then I try to hug her, even though she's very heavy right now, 25 pounds <laughs> for 14 months old, not yet 14 months old. I have to find out what's wrong with her, right? And then after I hug her, I carry her across the room, I try to sing lullaby for her. Finally, she will come down or even she will start to sleep. But you notice a baby, especially a spiritual baby Christian, cannot say thank you. Have you ever find that a baby, uh, after the mom changed the diaper, uh, give milk, and then say, thank you, mommy. <laughs> you will go, and then you will run away, right? If your baby is like that, I'm, right, Anna? <laughs> a baby, a baby Christian cannot say thank you. They can always cry, grumble, complain about anything. But God expects us today to grow up, grow up, say it together, grow up. I must grow up. I must grow up, right? We have to be grow, growing up as a mature uh, Christian, right? Because at the end, uh, God will uh, pick us up not as a baby bride, but as a adult bride who lives in holiness. Amen, everybody? Amen. All right. And then our Thanksgiving should be uh, expected as a sign of a giving Christian. A giving Christian, say together. Giving is Christian, all right? When we realize that God has done so much things in our lives and He will, I believe He will continue to do so, we should be uh, more than happy to give them some, to give Him something in return, right? Suppose if you love someone, if you love a girl, if you love a boy, you just uh, do not want to spend your time, your energy for that person, that VIP, right? Very important person. But you also want to give your money, right? All, all you have to that very special person, right? You just cannot say, oh, I love you. I love you, darling. Uh, I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my time, with all my energy. But just don't ask my money, not a penny I will give to you. Just keep that guy out of your life, okay? Amen? <laughs> Amen, girl? That guy is stingy, right? <laughs> the same thing. If we love God, it will be shown not only in 
our time, I'm glad that we have a, a, an awesome musician here, right? An awesome members of the BCC, right? Yeah. Give a plug for yourself. Amen. Yeah. Energy, but from our giving, say together, from my giving, from my giving to God, right? You see that the word thanksgiving, it's one word, right? Thanksgiving, but actually it becomes from, it makes from two words, right? Thanks and giving. So the first thing we must do in thanksgiving, we should give thanks to God. But then not only stop in giving thanks to God, we must give something to Him back. You see that uh, when we go to a restaurant, to a Chinese restaurant, to a Western restaurant, we are more than happy. We never grumble, we never uh, have any problem to give the waiters the tip, right? 15% at least, 20% when we have dinner with our very loved one, right? But why so many Christians have so much problem, so much critical spirit, so much... What? Uh, excuse is not giving 10% to God, right? Because when we celebrate Thanksgiving, we not only give thanks to God, but we always give something back to Him. Amen, everybody? Because remember, the Bible said that God loves a cheerful giver. I believe that if we give something to God with a cheerful heart, not a complain a heart, uh, I'm pretty sure that God never... Um, Forget what you give to her to, to him. He will give you back a hundred times right now and also in eternal life. Amen, everybody? So I invite everybody to stand up.